excited to get out there, uh, you know, throw on the new threads and get out there with uh, the new squad and, you know, try to just showcase what I can do and uh, what I'm going to bring this year for the team. Have you been feeling that good throughout spring training so far? I mean, no surprise to you that you were as sharp as you were yesterday? Um, no, I've been working really hard this off season, and um, you know, come over to this organization. They have a tremendous staff and tremendous group of uh, ball players around me, just to continuously show up every day, put in that work, and um, you know, we're just we're just taking taking day by day, chopping at the block, man, trying to chase that ring. As far as your health situation last year, you had the forearm issues. How long did that persist? Was it already getting better for you by the end of the season last year? Or was that something that you needed to work on as well during this off season? And how's it been feeling so far this spring? Yeah, um, this off season, I uh, was working out at Meister's facility in Arlington at TMI. And um, he has a tremendous staff over there as well. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of kinks that I needed to work out, a lot of um, mechanical stuff that I needed to work on, as well as um, treatment. Um, and so I, I picked up a, a lot of cool little, um, you know, new therapy methods and, you know, just structured my whole game plan and the way that I go about my day-to-day -day business completely differently. And um, I would say that about last week is when things started to ramp up and I started to get to a position where I felt like I was finding myself again. Were, were some of those changes because of the forearm issue or those were mechanical issues that were there previously and may have sort of added to that? Um, I think, yeah, I think they were mechanical issues that I was having prior and um, was able to get into into the gym and uh, get, you know, all those biomechanic uh, pods put on my body and um, just work diligently and, and focusing on what I'm not doing right and how I can be a more efficient, explosive baseball player. As far as your signing with the Padres, how influential, if at all, was your relationship with AJ back when you were with the Rangers? Yeah, it was huge, huge part in um, me making the decision to come over here. You know, uh, there's several guys in this organiza organization now that um, I worked closely with when I was with the Rangers, and I just felt comfortable. I felt that, um, you know, there's a lot of relatability, and I could identify with the way, um, you know, that this organization is being ran and the makeup, and, you know, the chemistry here is just tremendous. There's electricity in the air. Everyone's hungry, and you could just see um, – the tides turn in, in in the NL West and what we're trying to do here. Thanks, Keone. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Go to Annie. Hey, Keone. Um, last year with the missing uh, the summer camp because of COVID and then mm -hmm. just the injuries, what was last year like for you and was it frustrating at all to go through all that? Yeah, it was um, really, really frustrating. Just, you know, disrupted my, my tempo um, as a baseball player. You know, I think it did for, you know, the whole world, you know, I, we face circumstances that we've never been through. And uh, missing spring training 2.0 for five weeks consecutively, testing uh, positive for COVID, it was hard. And, you know, I was in Pittsburgh and, you know, just foreign place and trying to figure it out. Um, but, you know, I had a lot of time to myself to be introspective, look into, look into my heart, look into who I wanted to be moving forward. And um, I think it was something that has essentially helped me, you know, mature and, and figure out, you know, more of who I am and how I want to, you know, adjust and continue to be a dynamic part of this ball club. Hey, on that note, Keone, I, I read an article where you talked last year about, yeah, like how, you, how you've grown and changed since coming into the league. And this is your seventh season, right? Um, I wish we could be at your locker talking to you and getting to know you, but mm -hmm. since we're in this, you know, in this environment, what, what are you bringing to the Padres as far as just who you are as a person, as a player, and maybe how you've changed over these last seven seasons? Um, I mean, you know, when I when I came up to the game, you know, I made my debut at 21 and didn't really know too much um, on just how to, like, conduct myself in, in this specific world. And, you know, going through the trials and tribulations and having good leaders around me kind of coach me through the game on the do's and don'ts. Um, you know, I've had a lot of tremendous help um, from just perennial all-stars, future Hall of Famers, and you know, I'm grateful just for the opportunity to be able to be here and, and pretty much bring all of that, that added information, that game, and, and apply it, you know, for myself and as well as with my teammates around me. I think that um, I'm more so well-versed in how to go about my business in a big league season, and I think I could be an asset just with my tenacity on the field and then, you know, having some leadership off of it as well. Hey, I know I know you spent time in Hawaii. San Diego is not Hawaii, but do, are you? Do you know anything about San Diego? I mean, have you spent some time there? Are you 
are you do you think you'll be comfortable in that city oh i know i'm gonna be comfortable uh in that city you know i grew up uh back and forth between seattle and the harbor area carson to be specific and you know i used to always make my my little two-hour drive down south and you know go to sea world back in the day i was younger got to go to qualcomm when i was younger and uh you know, I'm just excited to be in this in this hub because I think that, you know, I've been able to watch the transition of how the city has, you know, done away with the Chargers and put their entire focus on our ball club. And I'm excited. You know, I got to hear all the chatter about, you know, what was going on in the streets during the playoff run. And I just know that when we step on that field and we're able to get a small percentage of the capacity uh, in Petco, it's going to be fun. And, you know, we're here to honor the city, honor the fans and go and, you know, chase the dream for everybody and give everybody that that happiness and that well-deserving they want. Keone, thanks. I appreciate it. No, thank you. Go back to scan. Are you comfortable sharing with us any of the mechanical adjustments that you might have been working on? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, are well-versed with, like, um, the drive line and Pitching Ninja and stuff like that. I've reached out to this guy named Robbie Rowland as well on Instagram. Just shot him a DM and uh, I started using this this connection ball, which pretty much shortens the um, the arm path and keeps everything more tight coiled while moving down the mound and a lot of linear movements, explosive movements. But the biggest thing, mechanical change that I made was shortening up my arm path so I wasn't dragging in the back. And so when my strike, when my uh, my landing foot hits, I'm just on time and I'm in a good position to to utilize all my power. Got it. So it's just being in a good throwing position as mm -hmm. the foot's landing and just being a little tighter to get there. More yes. Consistent. Mm -hmm. And that, that takes a little while to change, I guess, if you've been doing it one way your your entire life. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we do, we were just hammering down every day, you know, um, just repetitive movements and just focus on the consistency of what I was trying to do and not looking at the results. And I think the results have started to pan out and show themselves now that I've got well versed in, in every every movement that I've been practicing. Awesome. Thanks for that in-depth explanation. Appreciate it. Thank you. Go back to Annie for a follow-up. Hey, Keone, one of the things AJ's been trying to do is bring in guys with maybe a little bit more edge, uh, a little bit more of that dog mentality. Do you see that in, in the clubhouse But with the guys that you're seeing? Do you see kind of a, like a lay it all on the line? And, and how important do you think that is for to go toward a World Series? Yeah, I mean, if you look around um, in our clubhouse, I would say that uh, – you know, it's kind of like a group full of misfits to a small degree, you know, like, I mean, even Manny, who's who's a tremendous ball player, you know, um, just just super just all star, you know, he has an edge about him. Tatis has a complete edge about him. You know, I think he's one of the most dynamic and exciting players to play. You got guys that have been through adversity on and off the field. Tommy Pham um, example. And I mean, as far as our bullpen, we got a bunch of dogs back there that I know are hungry. And uh, we're all selfless, you know what I mean? We're just looking to win, win the game, and whether it's in the sixth, the seventh, eighth, or ninth, you know, we're just trying to hand the ball over and close it out, throw up a zero, and keep the momentum uh, in our hitters' hands because we know that if we can get uh, the opposition to fill, fill, fill our offense, it's, it's a done deal, you know, and we just want to apply pressure. Do you have a certain role in the bullpen that you ideally want? Um, no, to be honest with you, um, you know, the ninth inning, I think, has kind of sh slowly dwindled out of the game. I think people are starting to see that sometimes the games are one in the six, and they've always been like that, you know. Um, but the, S, the S's don't really matter to me. You know, I'm here to win. And that's, at the end of the day, that's what matters. That's how you stay in this game is by winning ball games and, and showing, showing, showing up and showing out.